You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The young legend. Karen Civil. I'm so happy to be here. We're happy like to once, have you here. What the hell happened, Karen? We was riding <laughs> with you. We was riding with her. I know. I know. We went to the, the election night. I know. And, we and you crying. You left kind of early. Don't think I didn't notice. Ange, I saw you stay. They all know, no, no, no. You guys left before me. No, 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 no. I felt like I saw Ange by the bar, but then I went to go turn to see if you guys were there. You guys definitely left. I had to go to the Colbert no, show. I did the Colbert show. Okay. I did the Colbert show that night. That's your excuse. What yes. was your no, excuse? I stayed the latest. Ange no, like, I didn't see you. I no, he was there. The they, they were sitting oh. somewhere else. I definitely oh, okay. stayed the latest. Okay. I, I was sitting with Yee's mom. We stayed okay. the latest. Because everybody that I saw coming in definitely wasn't there. Pusha was like, yeah, I'm going to go. People started, <laughs> people started changing their the clothes. Circle. Then there was just like, Ange was sipping on her drink. I was just like, this is not feeling real I good. I depressed. Ange yeah. for me. It started feeling bad. Yeah, then it started to space out, and I was like, oh, this is not feeling good. I thought it was a celebration party. That's really when I went. I was like, we're making history. I took my mom, because my mom loves Hillary Clinton. Yeah. So she really wanted to go. So I brought yeah. her with me. She was like, do you think we'll meet her? Da 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 da, da. And then... By the way, no. it was an open bar till she started losing. When she it started losing, it started losing. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did you get into politics, Casey? Um, you know, it started like two years ago. Um, Terrence Shea, Terrence Jenkins, he invited me to the White House. So mm -hmm. he was doing a whole bunch of Champion of Change events. And that was a first for me. Because I was just like, he was like, you've ever been to the White House? I was like, no, why? He was like, well, do you want to come? I'm like, why? He's like, well, they're doing all these things. You have a social voice and a platform. You should use it outside of entertainment. So it started with, with Terrence, and I, I eventually got a speaking engagement there. Um, and then Diara reached out because she saw all the stuff I was doing at the White House. And then she was like, hey, we love that you're using your voice and your platform in a certain way. This was sometime last year. Mm -hmm. And she said, um, like, what do you think about Hillary? And I was just like, you know, it's, it's a weird situation because at the end of the day, I'm still a Haitian American. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that the Clinton Foundation and things have done in Haiti haven't always been put in the best light mm -hmm. and a lot of conversations still need to be have about the things that were done and the money that was collected and stuff like that so I was like you know that's a conversation that I want to have but instead of complaining about it I said if I can be part of fixing this and be part of a solution you know me going in and being a part of this team eventually being able to bring in other people who can help rectify certain situations and learn how to um, help Haiti moving forward mm -hmm. why not do it so you know they had an event in Atlanta a grassroots for African American event, and she was like, "Do you want to host it?" I said, "Um, sure. Who's gonna be there?" That's my mm -hmm. first question. And she told me Monica. She listed all these people. She said, like, "Usher." I said, like, "Cool, cool." And she got to Monica, and that's what really like. I, I'm, I'm just a fan of Monica. All right, salute so, to Monica. What up, Mo? <laughs> so I was just like, "Um, Monica's gonna be there. Cool, I'm coming." So I was excited more than anything. Even when I I met Hillary, I was like, "Yeah, you know Monica's here," and she was like, "What?" No, I, no, I didn't think you. about I didn't think about it. I was just excited because I was like, the boy is mine. And I was like, I grew up on Monica. I was like, you know, Monica's here. She was like, what? I was like, you think she's taking pictures? She was like, what are we talking about right, right now? now? But yeah, that's where it started. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people always ask me, what is Hillary Clinton like? And obviously you know mm -hmm. her more than we do. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, because a lot of people have a preconceived notion of Hillary Clinton. They feel mm -hmm. like she's very staged. Some people say she's not likable. What would you I say? I mean, when, when, she was, when she was trying to run before, you know, people were like, she's very emotional. She's showing too much there, showing too much. So, of course, she came back and changed the business. Like, people are always going to complain, mm -hmm. you know, but... She's a mother at the end of the day. You know, she's crafted her career and she's worked for years and she's a hardworking, dedicated person. And it's every time you see her, I just feel empowered. Like, I'm like, I just cannot believe, like, this woman is running for president. She has an incredible, like, girl squad around her. She's like the epitome to me of, like, a Beyonce record because it's just empowering to be around her team, to be around her. It's women of color. It's different ages from young to old. And she gives people an opportunity, you know, being able to have an opportunity to be a part of her team. And I didn't come into politics. I came in, you know, I, <laughs> I started with fan sites. Mm -hmm. So even giving me a chance, and there were times where, you know, media sites would try to dig in and to find things about me. And she didn't go, okay, I don't want to be associated. They listened to my ideas, even bringing Pusha T in. Mm -hmm. You know, she caught a lot of flack for that. Yeah, yeah how did you get her to agree dealer, to a absolutely. reform drug dealer to push But. Them? You know, a, a thing for me is to, to be part of her campaign. There were four big things for me. Mm -hmm. It was working on, um, you know, 
making sure we have aid and relief for Haiti, prison reform, <clears throat> and that's something that I knew would acquire, you know, I would I would want to work with Pusha T on because that's something he understands and, and he Need wanted to. Yeah, like yeah. He, <laughs> he understands no offense. Yeah. Like he understands the system, having people in there and just what needs to be done moving forward. And, you know, he's also been working with my brother's keeper. You know, he's been to the White House a few times, so it's just like he's already vetted. People understand, you know, um, mental health and women's rights. Mm. So it only made sense for me to push to somebody who's very passionate, he's educated. Again, he was vetted through the White House. So it made sense to use him. And um, I remember when he put out, she put out that tweet, she got so much flack and so many people like- What tweet? She put out um, win tickets to a Pusha T concert if you <laughs> register to vote. So people were so mad, like why is she tweeting about Pusha T? But what people don't know is over 30,000 people registered to vote off of that tweet. Mm. And two of the people who won, I believe they were from Detroit or Chicago, <clears throat> they were at the event that you guys left early for. Um, they left early. I was <laughs> had to go to Cobesho. Okay, well, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to see the winners there and to see how excited they were, and then one of the girls was like, this is my first time ever voting. I won a contest. And she got to experience something. So it was it was more than anything empowering. You know, Pusha collabed and did the Delete Your Twitter t-shirt. The money for that went towards prison reform. So it was, it, it was just collaborative efforts. I'm glad I did it. Pusha's glad he did it. You know, coming out of it, so many people were registered to vote for the first time. Right. And we got a lot of engagement off of it, especially you for young millennials. After, after the, the, the um, I spoke to Diara because um, I know it was like a tough time. Right. And that we're was supposed tough in to, there, boy. Yeah, I, you know, and it was my birthday. It was, so birthday? It was, it was her yeah. birthday that day also. So oh. I was like, we had, you know, we had a cake. It was going to be a celebration. Damn. I had the post ready. I was like, I got the post ready. I got my caption. I had the post ready. I had my daughter and Hillary. I had the post ready. And yeah, then... I was just like, uh. first I was gonna put up my turtle fish, uh, aficionado um, post. Me and me and Pusha were matching. It was a great feeling. Then I was gonna follow up with the cake picture with me and her, like first lady cake birthday. This is inspiring. Thank you, God. I was like, okay, we're not putting up nothing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even bring the cake out at all? No, I was like, no I'm cake. cool. I'm so cool. The cake? No, we had it's drinks, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got Karen a drink for her birthday. We toasted. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, yeah, I'm just taking this straight. So um, how what do you a- think things went wrong? Like, what went left? Because I, I know going into it, we all were like, there's no way Donald Trump can win. Mm-hmm. And then with the odds, people were saying, okay, Hillary's got this in the bag. Yeah. What happened? She won the popular vote, though. I think, I think um, you know, Middle middle America, more than anything, is not ready for a woman president. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of, you know, um, I don't want to say Caucasian folks, um, especially like in certain certain areas, like especially women. It was crazy to see how much, you know, white women did not vote for her. And mm-hmm. more people were afraid of losing their white privilege than just like women's rights and things like that. And she stood so close to the mothers of the movement Mm -hmm. and for a lot of the things that Barack Obama stood for. So it's like, okay, here's this white woman supporting this black man. So it was just, you know, it was it was backlash from it. But I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a victory. And I thought people, you know, I thought people more than anything was ready to continue the change. Mm -hmm. But I will say, you know, I'm trying to be optimistic about the situation and, you know, um, hoping I, I have this thing where I feel like Donald Trump is, like he's a participation trophy. He's like that kid who is, who whose parents kind of cheated their way on to the team. Mm-hmm. Like he paid his way to get right. in there. And I, I feel like uh, they're going to set him up to win just to make Barack Obama look bad. Like with everything they, they, they didn't want to pass and do for Barack, I feel like they're going to do for right. Trump. Right, and he has so all fixing, his support is in Congress. So. Yeah, yeah, fixing from fixing roads. So I think he's he's probably going to keep Planned Parenthood. Everything he's, I think they're, they're literally, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. I'm trying to be optimistic about right. it. You know, he's already calling out of work before he even, before he even gets to work. Right. Like he don't even <laughs> already want to live there. So it's like, it's crazy, but I'm trying to be optimistic and think, you know, a lot of the things he was probably just playing off, you know. What um, people wanted to hear. What people wanted to hear. Him. He's really I not. Don't, I think y'all giving him too much benefit of the doubt. I think when somebody shows you who they are, believe them, man. And no, I you look at who he's appointing and you're like, wow. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's banning the known white supremacists who say yeah. he didn't want his kids to go to school with Jewish kids. Like, And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, like, in such a crazy and dark space, I'm just trying to find the light. Gotcha. And I'm just trying to, like, because the next four years are very scary and... and and it, it more than anything, it makes it scary because we don't know what's going to happen. It's right. a big question mark because he never really told us, like, 
what he plans on changing. He don't know. Know. Yeah, he, don't know. he didn't really say anything. He, he, he just know. said a whole bunch of things like, "I don't want to do this." I, what he doesn't like. Mm. So we don't know what he's keeping, what he's changing. And I didn't get a chance to watch his sixty minutes interview. I just I saw a lot of comments from yeah. it that were very scary. But um, I'm just trying to remain positive in a very trying to find the light in a very dark place. Would you think that Hillary should join the administration? I mean, yeah. I mean, if, if it's to help, if it's to help combat his ignorance and certain things he said and to, to help America move forward in some sort of fashion or way, why not? You know, if, if it can help us as a whole and as people continue Barack Obama's legacy, why not do now, it? Now, what if he says, Karen, I need some help with my social media? I'm don't cool. Do I'm cool. Do it, so, no, I'm cool because it's definitely people like, so why are you going to? I'm like, you know what? This would have been my first time fully, like, you know, being a part of history. And I'm like... I'll circle back in four years. Right. I'll see you, who's out there. But this is president. Yeah, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm you no. Know, Kim is not so bad. I was right. just like, I can, I can, <laughs> I can be over here. I was like, you know, the uniform be Yeezys. It'll probably be a little bit cooler. <laughs> It'll probably be a little bit cooler. So let's, let's talk we'll about see. Haiti some more, because mm-hmm. the Clinton Foundation was accused of stealing mm-hmm. money from Haiti. Did you ever have a conversation with her about that at all? You know, I had a, I had a conversation with Dr. and her team early on. Mm-hmm. And um, she put me in touch with the people who ran a, the, the Clinton Foundation. It was something that we had an off, you know, conversation, off, um, offline conversation about. And it was just pretty much how we're going to move forward. You know, it was a lot of things that were done wrong. Um, certain things were mishandled. But how do we move forward to help and get the relief and aid that we need? Mm-hmm. And that was something that was going to be done. And, you know, even though she's not in the White House, it's something that, I'm, you know, I'm still passionate about. Um, my Haitian culture, my Haitian people. So it's something that I'm still going to continue to fight for with things that I'm doing. And it's it's it's, it's a situation that's unfortunate, but um, I just want to keep I just want to keep moving forward. But we did, you know, I did have the conversation with Dr. Early on when I first started, and it was um, it was a good one. Like she understand how I felt, mm-hmm. and I was very honest and open. I was like, this looks crazy. You know, um, and it's a conversation that needs to be had, and it's it's something that she needs to do. And she definitely was out rallying in the Haitian communities and having the conversations and different things like that. So, you know, we'll see what happens moving forward. Did you get backlash from other Haitians over your supporters? Yeah, I mean, I definitely got backlash from from people, but you're gonna get backlash you get with backlash everything, no matter what. what yeah, no, it doesn't matter, like. If, if you vote or if you don't, don't vote. vote. If you support Hillary, you should support Donald. It no, doesn't but matter. it's just like people are just like, oh, how can you support Hillary? I'm like, okay, so do you want me to do nothing? Mm-hmm. Like you're 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 tweeting mm-hmm. and you're leaving these long, like people writing four. I call them Aliyahs, four page letters on my <laughs> on my oh, God, bed, but like on my Instagram, and I'm like, I want to create some sort of change. I'm mm-hmm. okay with the position. I want to find a solution to this problem. You're just talking about the problem. Word. So I'm okay with where I am and I'm comfortable sleeping at night knowing that when I get into a position of power, I'm going to bring other people on. It's about passing the baton, not complaining about it. Right? That's what I understand about our people. Wouldn't you want somebody who represents the Haitian community all the time to be in that inner circle? Yeah, you know, um, Gabrielle Bouvier was was also, you know, working working for her as well. So it's just like there are people who, who definitely have their backlash and who are saying certain things, but that comes with everything. You're going to mm-hmm. get backlash for everything. So I just, I'm like, I'm not going to, you're not going to chip away at me you know that doesn't make you whole so it's just like i didn't i didn't i didn't necessarily worry about it i know mm-hmm. what the overall picture was was to help haiti not hear you complain about haiti but i just want to help haiti now what's we, next what's next for karen civil now you, you you've been doing so much from when artists with mm-hmm. hillary clinton i mean what's next for you, you got, got your karen own civil day. line karen civil days coming up she got oh yeah i what's got karen next? civil day at the barclays <laughs> okay i'm really excited about um and I'm bringing designer will be there, which okay. I'm excited about, and then Fab because they're also Brooklyn natives. You know, I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Jersey, but we don't have a team anymore. No, you don't. So <laughs> Brooklyn took it. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> it's just it it just it just made sense. And this is my second time doing this, and it's great. It's just it's empowering more than anything. Because when I go, I'm usually thinking it's gonna be a whole bunch of like guys who come out, but it's girls like, oh my gosh, you get to see a basketball game, have fun. And then proceeds are going towards Haiti because I'm going back to do my Christmas event again. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, if everything happens right, we'll have Kodak Black. But um, <laughs> um, how the hell you get a day? Like, what do you do um, to get a day? Um, yeah, it's just you know you got to talk. We we had this conversation before. You got you got to talk to God about them blessings, baby. Shout out to day. So they just call you like Karen. Would you like your own day? Yeah, you know I've 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 done stuff with them in the past, mm-hmm. and it's just like you know I move them. I'm moving tickets, so oh, yeah. it's just like it, it makes sense. And then again, we're partnering with the foundation, so it's just like they get excited about doing 
um, community events, and then the proceeds again is going towards something that's that's helping a cause. So they're excited. Adult. Yeah. Do you feel like the more place. that you do and the bigger you get, the more backlash you get too? Of yeah. I mean, now more than anything, it's crazy. It's like before at the beginning of the year, it was just like it was hard for me to deal with mm -hmm. because I was stepping into like a whole new realm. But now I'm okay with it. Like now I'm just like I'm just kind of immune to it. It's like every week it's something new, someone saying something. So it's just like I don't. I don't, t I don't take anything personal because at the end of the day, it's like your opinion of me and your limited perception does not stop me from doing what I have to do. It does not motivate me. It does not move me. It does not, you know, it, it, it does not reflect upon me. So it's just like your opinion is your opinion, but it's, it's not my reality. Now let's talk about your branding agency because mm -hmm. you've launched this new agency. Mm -hmm. I folded. You I want folded. all the money, huh? You just want all the money. <laughs> I, I folded. Got a phantom. Uh, gold <laughs> rate, some type of spirit. Color rate. Okay, it's called a rave. Yeah. The funny thing is, I don't, I don't call Karen much, but when she got that, I called and said, "Congratulations!" Yeah, no, he he did. I was just like, "Oh wow!" I feel like because you know he's <laughs> like the you're like the, you're car, the car aficionado. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, I got a stamp." And then Fab liked it too. I was like, "Oh, wow. okay." I'm really like people that know about cars and yeah. care is really into this. And I was just like, "I like it because it's baby blue." And I was just like, you know, but I'll um, take it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I folded Always Civil into the Marathon Agency with my business partners. Jorge Paniche and Stephen Carlos. Um, they sound like they got a lot of money. You know Steve-O. <laughs> you know Steve-O. Steve yeah, yeah. yeah okay, okay. I, I say Steve Carlos. Jorge Steve oh, hey, sound like the plug. He's real man. <laughs> 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 no, Jorge is. Um, but um, it's something that we were thinking about for a while because, you know, we all work with management with Nipsey. And, you know, it's partially funded by Nipsey Hustle. And we had all these different ideas, especially when we did the $100 mixtape and the $1,000 mixtape. Um, it did well, and so many people were reaching out to us like, um, so we need help with certain things. Mm -hmm. So now we have, a, we have a whole bunch of clientele. It's from digital marketing to branding to management. Um, so we have like Nick Cannon. Um, I work with Nikki. Um, you have Jeezy, number one album, by the way. Yeah, Excited about that. Yeah, we know Jeezy worked because he yeah. got number one. Yeah, he's, it's, he's listened. Mm -hmm. um, everything. YG. Yeah, YG. Of course, we have Nipsey. We have Dave East. Um, we have Lajan Slim, who is the first Haitian rapper signed to Def Jam, so I'm excited about Sound that. Sound Kanye too, right? Kanye um, Def Jam? Yes, do Def Jam. Let him tell you that. But yeah, <laughs> um, he's definitely on Def Jam. So, so what happens? So basically, you help like what, tell, explain what the agency does um, for people that might well, not I'll, understand. Well, I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain necessarily what I do. So mm -hmm. I'm the chief marketing officer. So I basically handle branding and marketing for the different people that are on there and, and especially social engagement. So for someone like Jeezy, we handled the marketing and certain PR and things, how to get him out there, right. how to get the conversation Made starting. A lot of dinners. Yes. Angela <laughs> came to every single one and I applaud you. Angela's like, Karen, why every time I see you, and it wasn't even in New York, it'd be in different Miami, states. Miami, yeah. yeah. The, the pressure from Karen and Natina is like, yeah. okay. Oh, <laughs> salute Natina. Cause Natina's a beast. Like, I'm like, um, I don't want to text her. She's like, oh, I'll text Angela. Yeah, I'm Natina like, will be on your back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, I'll get Angela in this city. You take her in this, <laughs> in this one. I'm yeah, like, you don't do enough for Natina, man. You yeah. gotta celebrate Natina more. We gotta, <laughs> yeah, more. applaud and her. Natina we gotta get, we have a, a, a Christmas party because she, she literally, um, she literally makes it happen, and it's mm -hmm. just wonderful working with her, especially when it comes to Dave, it comes to YG, and it comes to Jeezy, because they're all Def Jam artists. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, it's, again, doing branding, marketing for them. So for Jeezy, it was doing marketing and branding for his album that came out, which is number one. I'm going to keep saying that again. Mm -hmm. I'm excited <laughs> about. Um, for YG, it's doing branding as well. Um, for, for someone like Nikki, it's just, you know, I help with her social engagement and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, cause people don't have time, right? Like they're it's so hard. busy with life and things that are happening that they don't, you know, they forget dates, they forget what's happening, making sure conversation is happening. They're keeping up to date. You're so, so right. Cause like I'd be forgetting to like uh, so many things I need to post and tweet about. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I'm running around doing things, it just doesn't happen. I'm like, Oh man, I forgot I was supposed to do this. I got to do that. You don't realize like social media is like, like, it's like you, you know, people have jobs off of that. Yeah. You know, that's what I got hired at Beats by Dre for. So it's just like creating a content calendar and a schedule. Like people like, yo, you, you really take this Instagram thing seriously. I'm like, yeah, I make a lot of money off of I asked Emmy to post Instagram one and thing, Twitter. And he made me write the whole entire content. <laughs> I ain't got time so to do Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, like, you, on, but no, right listen, here. yeah. But, make my life but, easy. But honestly, when people are like, hey, can you post it? I'm like, send me the caption. They're like, but you do. I'm like, no, 
No, See? send me what it is, the at, yep. send everything properly right. so I can just load it up, cue it, ready to go because I have everything scheduled out because I don't, like, it's one less thing to think about. So I applaud you for doing Absolutely. that. That's good you and Nikki still got a relationship, though, because y'all had a relationship before she was yeah. with me. Yeah. And y'all would do the double date and then the next day. <laughs> double so, date. So now, so, oh. so, so now yeah, we still, still cool. yeah, we still have a relationship. What's crazy is people think I don't have a relationship with Meek. Mm -hmm. You know, me and Meek are, are still great. He is one of the people in the industry that I will say who is very genuine and just naturally happy for you. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you can send him be like, hey, I just learned to do, oh, that's crazy. That's dope. Keep going. And he's like really inspiring you know he, he really gets inspired that you are continuously doing things so we still have like a great relationship we had a relationship before mm -hmm. you know the person i was dating of course we had one before that and we're gonna have one after that so now you know. i see you and mac miller made up also oh yeah <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm, I'm in a happy happy space happy place and i was like more than anything i think um the last time i was in here i was definitely in my feelings because <laughs> I'm you not gonna lie. Yeah, you was I was skin. on my MVs. Yeah. <laughs> I was on my Jersey. <laughs> but no, I was like, I was mad. At, I know, I honestly was like, mad. it was entitlement kicking in. Mm -hmm. I was being spoiled. But, but no, I just felt like I'm like, damn, we're friends. Mm -hmm. Like your mom is like my mom. Mm -hmm. You know, his mom's name is Karen too. I'm like, she's like my mom too. I talk to her more than I talk to you. But then we made up, and I know he was going through things. And, he was on drugs. Yeah, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't um, understanding enough of that. I was gotcha. just like, yo. You shouldn't be doing this. You should get over it. Like, let's just go back to the way it was. But I didn't understand, like, in the depth in which the pain he was in and what was happening around him. But then we hung out. We, like, walked up a mile one day. And we're just, like, walking, kicking it, hanging it. And I had, like, a dinner for him <laughs> in Los Angeles. Hey, you know I love dinners. No, she didn't come to oh. this one. I make her go all the Jeezy ones, though. <laughs> but um, had a dinner, and then we, we talk often. So I'm just, I'm happy more than anything. Because last time I was here, I was just like, I was kind of like mad at the world. What about, what J. about Cole? J. Cole? Yeah. yeah. No, but J. Cole I haven't spoken to. And and even with that situation, I look back mm -hmm. and I was kind of disappointed in myself the way I even just like addressed it and handled it. Because I don't think they initially, I don't think they knew how I felt, especially mm -hmm. like his management, Ibrahim. I didn't get to say like, yo, like, what's up? Like, why am I getting the short end of the stick? I think that was a conversation I should have had with them before mm -hmm. I opened up. Pandora's box and just set it here, mm -hmm. but um, clearly don't they don't care because they ain't reach out. Yeah, but <laughs> but it's like I, I, I saw him twice and you know I just made I think I just made it more awkward. Right. Um. But like I'm 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 happy with the place that he's in. I know he got married. He's continuously doing great things. He's using his social platform to do great. And more than anything, it, it it's bigger than oh let me get an interview, let me do this. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know my platform was to help artists grow to do certain things, and he's definitely done that. Jim I'm Jones happy. Too? Yeah. Um, Jim Joe, I think he, he, he was here. Number. Yeah. yeah. He wanted to reach out. Um, huh? He reached out to me. I seen him at the birthday party. So I said, yeah. that must be good. Yeah, no, he definitely, he was just like, people hit me like, oh, it's a party? What's going on? <laughs> um, but he came by. He came by towards the end. But I saw him actually at Revolt Music Conference. Um, he was outside the hotel. I was like finding everybody to come to the Beat Suite. He was outside the hotel. We spoke briefly. So it was good. So it's just like, sometimes, again, it's bigger than me. You know, he's working on his music. And he wants to do some stuff with YG and Nipsey, and we talked about that. So, you know, it's definitely um, helping move that forward because it's right. really not it's, its really not about me. So, How does that yeah. work with your brand, though? Because you rep Hillary, <laughs> and you got known gang members like YG and Nipsey. Mm -hmm. You got reformed drug dealers <laughs> like Push A G. Like, like wh Why you can't get a girl who do both? I'm with you. Yeah, I'm but it's just like... I. I I always tell people, it's this, one, it's this one thing. I remember watching an episode of Oprah. Do you remember when she had the crash... Um, yes, I do. The crash um, cast, cast on her show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ludacris wasn't allowed to come. Right. 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 Yeah. It was yeah. An audience or something. Yeah. And I was just was just like, I love Oprah. I love Oprah. But I was just like, you that know was what? disappointing. Yeah. I was like, that in itself is just like, why can't hip hop be a part of the conversation? And later on down the line, you know, we see her in Marcy and she has a great relationship with Jay. And I like that Oprah. Right. And I said, I want to be a form of that in my own way. Mm -hmm. Why can't I be with people who are business people? This is that's their reality. Mm -hmm. That's how they grew up. That's how Nipsey and YG grew up. Mm -hmm. You know, and again, one can be a blood, one can be a crip, but they also can sit in the same room, have business, they have business ventures, they're entrepreneurs. So that in itself is right. incredible. And again, it's just like I still can, you know, push a T is at the White House. He's he's reformed, he's doing certain things and that was their past, you know, it's moving forward in their future and things that they're working on. And I'm okay with that. And let's be clear, there's all different levels of crimes. There's all these blue collar crimes. Yeah. We don't really yeah, stress 
yeah. all of that is just because these and are hip hop artists. Yeah, but they're not white like collar crime. Yeah, um, but yeah, they're not collar, like sorry, outside crime. still gang banging and like YG is on a sold out tour. Right. Nipsey he's has his life for the better and it's, yeah, and he's not selling crack inspiring yeah. for people to actually. I mean, he's see rapping that. about it, but it's still it's just it's just music. It's right. it's it's the, the, he's you know he's a product of his environment. Who push is not still selling? Push is not he's selling. not push is very comfortably. Now, push is good. Push is good. Yeah, no, I mean he's <laughs> he's definitely he's like president of good music. Yeah. You know he's. He's 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 hot out he's here. He's comfortable. Now. He's not selling. Crack. Yeah, you know he got his clothing line is mm-hmm. doing well. Yeah. and you know he's 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 chilling. Like, doing good. Yeah. Now you got uh, you getting honored at the Haitian American. Yeah, that actually. Award. What is that? So the 1804 awards um, is like an, a, pres- a prestigious honor. Like I used to look it up, like because I thought it was like older Haitian Americans, mm-hmm. and I was like, man, I can't wait to get into that bracket. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to be over there. I thought it was like a certain age. Mm-hmm. Then um, Mona reached out to me at the beginning of this year. Mona Scott reached out to me and Claudine Joseph, who is the COO of LL Cool J Enterprise, who are both Haitian Americans. And they were like, we want to nominate you for this. And I was like, is there an age limit? Am I old enough? Yeah, (laughs) not to say it like that, because it was just like prestigious, like doctors. and, And like, I was just like, okay, cool. I was just like, oh my God, thank you so much. And it actually happened a few days ago. And it was like, I just was super overdressed Congrats. for it. Yeah, thank you. And That's I was a big like, deal. It, it, it's, a big deal. it's 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 exciting because it's just like even when I was telling people, I was like, man, I can't believe you know Mona and Claudine did this for me, and it's just like they're like Mona Scott. Love so it's hip-hop. Mona's award show. Or? No, she sits on the board with Not Claudine. Award, she's nominated. Yeah, say man. But it's just like it's an award reception ceremony right. because it's about um, change makers and people who are doing great things in the Haitian community. So um, you know, again, they were doctors. It was. Um, young lady from Vicky from um, Orange is the New Black. It was like about 30 of us. Mm-hmm. So it was incredible within itself. And it's just like Mona didn't have to do that. Claudine didn't have mm-hmm. to do that. So the fact that they noticed me again, it's the whole passing of the baton. And so they you know, saw more cool? me. Like yeah. y'all got a good relationship? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely good. I do a lot of work with Mix. Mm-hmm. Um, and she supports she supports women entrepreneurs. You know, and, and I know she gets a lot of backlash. And I was saying this to her team because they just see one side and you know she's depicted as the evil person Same who Scott it. Young <laughs> let's be clear Cardi <laughs> B, <laughs> Cardi B <laughs> done got herself a record deal yeah now. it's like a, it's yeah. a lot of good outcome comes from it and again it's if people if that's the platform you want to use that's the platform you use this is somebody who's been a part of the violator team mm-hmm. you know she's a she's a beverage mogul at this point and she's just she's just a mogul period and she does so much great things for the community you know, it's just this is what people know her for. But it's just again, it's it's how you how you view a situation, how you view her. I see her as a woman who's done incomparable things for Haiti, who's doing things for her community. Like she has, she's doing like a turkey drive in in um, Newark on Saturday, and it's just like she doesn't push everything out there. It's just like you kind of have to go find it. Right. But um, I think I think you know she's an incredible woman, and I'm I'm just I'm fortunate enough that you know she she nominated me, and she even you know gave me. She, you know, she she let the light shine on me. Now, have you spoken to Lil Wayne about his comments that he made? Because I know you guys are tight. <laughs> yeah, that was like one of your I'm first sure. sites you launched, right? Yeah, and I'm was... sure it was a disappointment when you heard him. Um, yeah, it wasn't supposed to come out. You know, it's just like he wasn't. He's somebody who who's in a bubble, and people don't understand that he's in his own world. You know, there are people who don't watch TV, who just watch ES. Like he just watches ESPN. He's in his own world, and he's doing certain things. A lot of people aren't updated on what's happening with with like our society and our reality because unfortunately it doesn't resonate and doesn't touch down on them. Like they don't take the train. They don't know what it's like to take the subway or to know what's happening in their backyard because his backyard looks a little bit different. I'm not saying I'm not giving him an excuse. I'm not giving it a pass. I'm not saying it's okay. But it was an interview that wasn't supposed to come out because he understood later he wasn't. And the way it was edited and chopped up, it made it seem like he just didn't care about Black Lives Black Lives Matter movement. He understands what it is. You know, he was later updated and officially, you know, um, they updated him and told him what exactly it is, what it's about, what the movement's about, because I think people get very misconstrued when it comes to that. They just think they're saying only black people matter. Um, um, so it's just like he understands. And it was something that was supposed to come out. They tried to depict him in a bad light and use it to their advantage to, to like, taint what Black Lives Matter means and kind of making it seem like, hey, even this rapper doesn't care that. about you guys. And it's an unfortunate situation. You know, he apologized and it's it's a, it's a lesson learned. You know, he 
He's somebody who has charities. He helped me with my Christmas drive yes, uh, last year with donating clothes to all the kids at the school. So he cares about black lives more than anything. You know, he has children. He understands the importance of it. And it was just an unfortunate situation. You, we had a conversation on the radio about T.I. You think T.I. was wrong for calling him out um, publicly? Yeah, this is somebody who's your friend. You know, it's just like... I said the same thing. Said. If you're my yeah. friend, you call me. You know, and I, I love T.I., but, you know, again, T.I. is opinionated. Mm -hmm. So you can't even be offended by that. Um, so it's like it, it's it's kind of a straddle the fence. Mm -hmm. But this is somebody who's your friend. Like like if something's happening, Angela or or, or Charlemagne, they'll text me. They'll call me. You know, if you it's buy just a car, like Envy will text you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or he needs he needs a you know Louis bag or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, yeah, yeah. But it's just like you call and you text each other. You don't put it in a public place of form. I definitely think you should have. You know, I I reached out. You mm -hmm. know, and it's just like hey you know, let me help you understand. Like, if you really care and you want to fix the situation, you reach out, like, let me update you and let me make sure you're well-informed and what's going on in your community and what's happening so you don't make these mistakes again, as opposed to just uploading and saying right. these things. But, again, T.I. is very opinionated, so you can't be offended by that. He probably was just in the moment at the time. And, you know, they'll work it out between them. So. Sure they will. And I think he did they'll that. They'll be fine. I, I think yeah. T.I. did that for the other side. Like how when you said people look at Wayne and use yeah. Wayne as a, see, even this rapper don't care about yeah. BLM. I think T.I. did that to, like, deflect that. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's a conversation they're going to have with, with each other, and I think they'll be fine because, you know, their kids grow up together. Right. The, the, the whole family is, like, kind of united. So it's just it's something that played out in the public, and I think everyone's adding the opinions, kind of, like, fueled it, too, and just right. added the emotion. I think, I think they'll be fine. They'll be fine, though. Why can't you getting all this money? Why you ain't pregnant yet? Why somebody ain't trapped you yet? Wow. Why yeah. haven't some young man <laughs> trapped you? Don't put that pressure on us. <laughs> Are you dating? Uh, like no, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm definitely dating. I'm in a, I'm in a, again, happy place, happy space. I'm dating. I'm happy. So you're single? Um, no. She she's okay. Dating. No, no. I'm I'm in a relationship. I'm okay. Good. Yeah. Get her like, pregnant, I'm, whoever you are. What you waiting I'm, on? She got I'm race. good. I made the mistake. <laughs> yeah. We both got one. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> Drop the boot, bomb the carriage. And her boot back to back race, damn We didn't want to hit that his and hers, but we could have. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I I made the mistake before of just putting everything on 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 front street and I just feel like sometimes I just want to keep certain things personal. Right. And, and you don't want I people just, weighing in. Yeah, weighing in and, and just all, yeah, just 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 coming in and and I just feel like all these like, treasures. Oh, you now he was messing with my friend. Oh, girl, here he is. Yeah, here. you want to hear the, him. the opinions of people and certain things and and it's just like I want something for myself. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, my relationship and what we're doing is 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 like we're fully rooted and we're good. And, you know, we have a foundation before we come out here. Because everyone now, it's like, you date for a week. New boo. Mm -hmm. and, it's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I'm not going through the process of deleting nobody on Instagram right. again. Because that's a lot. I was just like, and then I turned that last relationship into a business. And I was like, this one, I just want to have. Mm -hmm. You I do wanna you. Be, I'm going to do yeah. my thing. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, we, we, we work together in a form. And it's just like, it's great. And it's just like, he's happy for me. He calls me his, you know, he says, you know, um, he's my number one fan. And he's very supportive because the ego thing in this business is hard. I'm around a lot of rappers, and you make money and you get this notoriety and attention. Everybody's not comfortable with that, mm -hmm. you know. They like women in a certain like, you know, men like the models or the vixens or the things, and it's it's hard to see them depict you in a very like you live a very man life, but you're a female. So it's just like you know the ego's okay, everything's in check and intact, and we're good, and and you know. <laughs> I'm happy. So, yeah. yeah. So for president 2020. Now, now, I saw you featured in the New Yorker too. Mm -hmm. you said you made Hillary cool. Yes. Which mm -hmm. seems like a very tough task. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 you know, necessarily bringing in those ideas, you know, the push of tees, the certain things that you partner with even, you know, coming on the show and it's just yeah, it's just it, it, you know, people kind of like I got a lot of backlash from people like, "Oh, you're pandering. She's using you to pander." I was like, "Listen. You want people to hear your hear your side hear your views hear your objectives on how you feel about a certain situation you, you want your voice to be heard that's why we're here and she's listening and then you get upset when she listens so mm -hmm. i'm like this is just what it is it's just like she we i want her to be a part of culture it's not pandering it's just like i want her to notice us mm -hmm. see us for who we are and her team was open to it they loved it and and i had an incredible time it's it's something i can add to my resume like yeah 
Too bad we didn't win. <laughs> you know, I think it was good because a lot of times when you when people interview Hillary Clinton, a lot of times mm-hmm. it's the same things that come up over and over again. Mm-hmm. Oh, these emails mm-hmm. and just uh, ma- the mass incarceration, the things that are very important, but it is the same answer that she gives mm-hmm. every time she's questioned. It was important, I think, to see more of her personality. Yeah. Absolutely. Too for well, people to feel, am I connected? Yeah, her? does she know what's going on, on. or is it just does all? she? Yeah, does she really know? You're not feeling like this is a staged answer, and there's like a lot of ideas too with hers of being part of mothers of the movement. You know, having them meeting with them. You know, her meeting with the Black Lives Matter team, her meeting with D. Ray, even her coming up here. So it's just like it's a lot of things. She was like, I got to make sure that you know I'm reaching out and I'm in touch with what's happening. You know, when I was in Philadelphia, I'm like, yeah, you know, we're gonna have freeway. She's like, oh, okay, cool, dope. And it's just like she she understood. She, a, she didn't use dope, but okay, cool. <laughs> but it's like even understanding the importance of like making sure that we use people in the community who have a voice and certain things. And it was just like very organic and it wasn't staged. And I was I was excited more than anything. Mm-hmm. You know? Speaking of your resume, I, I don't know if I, did I hear it? Or did it you must have heard it on text. You said you feel like you don't give Angie Martinez enough credit. No, I feel like, like, like I love, I love Angie and I, I it's just like, it's 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 weird now. I know it's just like, you know, I know she she's probably not even thinking about it, but I just she really gave me my first start because mm-hmm. her apprentice contest and it's weird. <laughs> Trump is president, but they don't do that anymore too. They need to do that. No, too. no, Things like that. They need to. Do oh, that. oh, oh! I thought she made his show. I was like, no, no, about, no he has to he has to run the country, <laughs> Envy. He already wants to play golf. <laughs> no, it gives people a shot to get oh, on no. radio and to work, and they don't really do that anymore. No, I definitely feel like it's something she probably should be bring. She probably should bring back and people. I don't think people really, you know, I think they do understand the importance of her. And I just, I, I wholeheartedly love her. And it's just, I tell people, I'm like, it was Angie Martinez, Angela Lee that I absolutely love. And I, she had her dinner for her book release in LA. And when they sent me an email for it, I was like, oh, I'm invited. <laughs> so it was, inc- it was an incredible feeling. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to get too excited. I'm going to see how many people's in the room. I was like, maybe they invited a lot of people. But then when it was like, oh, it's the back room, I was like, oh, that's like 30 people. Yeah. So then now I'm like, okay, let's figure out the seating arrangement. And I was like one seat away from her. I was like, I, I hit the, um, and where we made it. That's all I just kept yeah, playing right. in my head. She mentioned and, you in her book, though. Yeah, because I Because of that like, apprentice program. Right. Yeah. But like, you know, even just speaking with her afterwards, and it's just like she gave me a copy early. And the next day, like I did not speak to anybody. People just kept calling my phone. I was like, hey, I can't talk to you. Um, no offense. I just, I'm reading. Like, yeah, no, it's just like I read the book and I was like, I talked to Angie. The last person I talked to was Angie. I needed to sulk in. Mm. So I was like, hey, I'm going to get back to you tomorrow. No offense. Just talk to Angie. Like, they're like, when? I'm like, mm, last night, but um, I need a day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I need a day to sit with this and reflect. I had the book. I had lit my candle. I was in bed and it felt good. And then, and then before I went to bed, I texted her this whole long thing because I read it in a day. I texted her this whole long thing because she gave me her phone number. I was excited about that. I was like... <laughs> My bucket list, met Monica, hanging with Angie now, because this is somebody that I, like, I admired growing right, up. Right, right. And she was just so open and so caring, and she didn't have to be, mm-hmm. you know? And and I just I just, I just, just sometimes just feel like I just... And she's she needs so her humble, own too. Yeah, she just... If you talked to Angie yeah. when she was writing her book, I remember we went out to eat, and we were talking about a lot of yeah. things. For me growing up, like, listening to Angie on the radio and a lot of things that she used to do, that I was like, wow, this is monumental. She said, you think people care about that? That's no, I'm like, Angie, I think you don't understand how much of a big deal it is, certain things that you did because you did it. That's yeah. Right. She didn't think a lot of things were a big deal. I was like, you have to put this in. You have to talk about this. I, You're the reason why yeah. this happened. And she just does, doesn't look at it like that. And, w- and more than anything, what was monumental and what I learned from her to create my blueprint was, Angie, and you did the same thing. It's just like, it was about her personality, her voice. That's what tuned you in. It was like, you didn't know what she had on what she was wearing, right. what she looked like. But none of that, yeah, right. like, well, yeah. but none of that mattered. It was just like, she just got the interview. Like she got Tupac, she got Biggie. When mm-hmm. things were happening like in in the world, like when 9-11 happened, I didn't want to watch CNN. I want to know what Angie Martinez Absolutely. is telling me. That's where I'm getting right. the story from. Like when things were just happening in our world, I, wanted, I want Angie to tell me everything. So it's like, you're tuned into your radio and it, it's just like, she was that therapist. She and was she, that Frasier yeah. for me. But then, then to see her then turn around, and then she just wasn't a radio. Everyone just saw her as a, a radio host. Then she turned around and, like, she dropped an album, and then she's performing mm-hmm. at the, the Grammys, mm-hmm. and she's doing all this. I was like, oh, 
you could do more than one thing. Right. She people quit don't. American Idol. <laughs> yeah, and but it's just don't like know she runs the board. She cuts her own interview. She does all that ish herself. Yeah. And she's real anal with it. She quit American Idol. Think yeah, about but, that. But, I remember. But, but Think but about, you, like she decided not to say what I wanted. It's not what yeah, I wanted. Yeah, because she's she's not she's 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 not that like mean. Person, mm-hmm. right. like right. she doesn't want to crush anyone's dreams, exactly. and I'm glad she's, you know, she's not that, she's not like that, because she was very inspirational. That says a lot people. about her as a person, because a lot of yeah. people would have just stuck around for the check. Stay yeah, true. and she's just like, no, I'm not gonna do this, but just me being able, to, she's, she's really the equivalent of, of the person who's like, get you a girl who can do both, because she literally does everything, and that let me know that you don't have to just stick and do one thing, and right. I think that's what confuses people a lot about me. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you do? I'm like. What I want, right? Because it's just like somebody. <laughs> like, I'm like, because a year ago I would never been like I'm gonna be helping. Like I know I'd be part of Hillary's stuff, but I didn't think I'd be helping in this type of change. You know, even becoming an author and doing certain things. I was just like, you never know what's in store. And someone like Angie Martinez showed me that's possible. Salute right. to Angie. We don't celebrate yeah. Angie enough. She need Angie Angie Martinez Day. I want to host. <laughs> you got another book coming, right? Yeah, I'm working on I'm working on another book. Um, congratulations on yours. Thank you. Ordered too. Um, I'm I'm working. Actually, it's a continuation to my book because I couldn't fully put it out. Right. Because originally, yeah, it was through Simon and Schuster through the Birdman situation. So, um, yeah, I'm. It's gonna be a continuation, and it's it's just really just you know continuing to inspire. next millennials mm-hmm. yeah i love that and you've been doing your profiles on people too i was the first yeah. person that you profiled yes which i appreciate because i people were like oh man it's not enough i'm like i don't know who your network is but i was just like i know a whole bunch of boss girls mm-hmm. and i was like maybe i should use my platform to showcase them right, more you actually do uh you're around a lot of women who yeah. are bosses I, yeah so that's that's the thing it's like when people always said like man you know like like yeah it's not enough of us i was like what are you talking about it's a lot of us so now more than anything, we have the we have on Live Civil, we just we showcase different women who are doing incomparable, incredible things. Angela, again, like she said, she was one of them. But it's people who can work from fashion, from engineering, to doing different things, who are just helping their community move forward. And I'm like, if I can use my platform to showcase people who may not have the same thing as me or it's just the same notoriety, let's do it. Like, let's let's shine a light on everybody because we're just out here just like, I just feel like we're such in a great space as women, mm-hmm. you know, as entrepreneurs and, and, and business women. Let's just continue to showcase each other, grow, and, you know, I just want to see more of our faces in the boardroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you joining us and stopping through. The yeah. young legend, Karen Civil. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's like once a year. I feel good, though. I know. That's good. I'm my, my mother loves us. She, she wants to know, like, are you guys good? You and Charlamagne. Are we good? Yeah, cause oh, she was upset. Oh, she probably heard. Oh, you told was me this. No, remember? Yeah, when she was arguing, my mother, my mother was upset at that. She's like, "Why is she talking to him?" I was like, "Mother, joking." She's like, "No, I don't think oh, they're they joking." joking. They wasn't joking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, that was y'all game, That was nasty. I don't remember. That was nasty. <laughs> she Which was one? just. Uh, she she was, won. Which one? It was the one before me and you got at it. I don't know, but my you mother was no. Yeah. My mother was upset though. She's like, but she's like, was Angela's so. When she was calling she... me bleach face. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, we were playing. That was a joke. Oh, we were playing. No, I know, but she was just, she was, she was, she was a little, she was upset. But I was like, mother, joking. Yeah, but yeah, she but doesn't I'm understand. Tell you what really happened with that situation was that Charlemagne was filming me, and it was annoying. Oh, that was, oh, <laughs> right. So I was just saying anything. Like, <laughs> right. So I said that because I thought he wouldn't post it because I'm calling him a bleach face. Oh no, he's gonna. Post it. He's so, posting I'm every and I'm anything. Like, I'm to say the worst thing <laughs> possible to him. Yeah. He's was, posting. He's and he posting. Still posted it. And you yeah. were so drunk. No, but he's posting every and anything. And then I laughed, and she was like, "You think this is funny? Would you talk to your brother?" I'm like, "Yeah, I would, man." Like, she took it very serious. <laughs> and I was like, "Angela, you, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. You might have to apologize because I'm well, gonna have to keep you hearing about this." I am sorry to Karen Sybil's mom. It was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I said that just because he was all in my face, camera, and I wanted him to not post it. And more than anything, said something crazy. <laughs> I was like, "Ma, you know this is not me, right? Saying oh, this." And she was acting. I was like, "Ma, you can't really scold other people." Children, like that's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have to live civil from now on. Oh, yes, man. yes. Karen <laughs> Civil is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club every weekday morning. Tune in.